Anin man damnen dish in a khas makwan do dem ajmuk and dum jaba hi my name is eva and welcome to the national loon center's first outdoor exhibit which is all about loon calls loon in ojibwe is mom One of my favorite loon calls sort of sounds like laughter, the one that sounds like and I wonder what it means. To help us answer this question, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Walter Piper. I'm Dr. Walter Piper. I'm a professor at Chapman University in Orange, California. And I've been studying common loons in northern Wisconsin for 28 years now, and I am particularly interested in territorial behavior. During the course of my work on territorial behavior, of course, uh, I've learned a great deal about loon calls. And uh, one of the things that loons are most famous for is their, their vocalizations. And these include the territorial yodel that, that's given only by males and the wail, which is the mournful uh, descending cry that carries long distances at night. That's the one people are most familiar with usually. And then the laughter-like tremolo is another call that people hear a lot. Uh, those are the three most common calls. And then there are a variety of soft calls that loons give as well. But our understanding of those is rather fragmentary um, in terms of what we know scientifically. Uh, the territorial yodel, again, it's given only by males, and uh, we know that males give it in territorial situations, such as when a territorial intruder flies overhead or it lands on their territory. Especially uh, males are likely to give that call when they have chicks. It's a protective call that they use often to defend their chicks. We know a good deal more about the yodel. We know now that, that older males yodel a lot more frequently than young males do. Um, we know that males uh, who are parents of two chicks yodel about three times as often as males that only have a single chick that they're trying to defend. We know also that the yodel contains a lot of information about a male. For example, the frequency or pitch of the yodel gives information about the size of the male giving the, the yodel. That is, a larger male has a lower pitched uh, yodel, as you might expect. And uh, that's an interesting uh, pattern uh, to see because it means that if you're a male and you're yodeling, you're telling an intruder how big you are, which doesn't always necessarily seem like a good idea uh, when you're uh, trying to defend your territory. But that's an interesting, another interesting fact we know about yodels. We also know that yodels are an indication of aggressive intent. A male that yodels is likely to try to uh, behave aggressively towards an intruder that comes, comes near it. Most recently, we've learned the frequency of the yodel also seems to be related to the age of a male. The older a male gets, the higher pitched its yodel becomes. So it not only yodels more often, but its uh, yodel is higher frequency uh, as it gets older. So we know a great deal about, about the territorial yodel. It's a relatively rare vocalization as well. A more frequent vocalization that people hear is the wail, the mournful sounding wail. We know that one function of the wail is as a contact call between uh, males and females. When males and females get separated, when pair members get separated, they'll all, one will wail at the other to, to keep touch with its mate. We also know that eagles elicit uh, wails by loons. That is to say, uh, when an eagle flies over, a, a loon is likely to wail. And it's kind of interesting that loons wail to eagles because it seems to be a vocalization, the wail seems to be a vocalization that, that um, loons give even when they're alone and an eagle flies over. Well, why would you give a vocalization when it's just you and the eagle there? It seems that loons are actually signaling to the eagle that they've seen the eagle and there's no point in the eagle trying to attack the loon. So it's a vocalization 
um, that could save time for both the loon and the eagle, and of course potentially save the loon's life because eagles do attack loons. So the whale has a couple of different uh, functions. We also know that, as you might expect, males which are larger than, than female loons uh, have lower frequency whales uh, on average than, um, than do females. Uh, finally, we know that when individual uh, loons get separated or when they've lost their mate and they're alone on a lake, they go through periods of wailing. It's almost, it sounds like they're mourning the loss of their mate or the fact that their mate's away. But we think that's, uh, the, the reason for those whales is that uh, loons are trying to attract other uh, birds to replace their, uh, another mate to replace their lost mate. The tremolo is the third loud call uh, that's given. It's called a tremolo, sort of tremulous. It's like a, a laughter-like call. It sounds like human laughter, but its function is very different from human laughter. Um, it's one of the most frequent vocalizations heard by humans because humans often cause loons to give that tremolo. It's an alarm call. And so often when motorboats get too close or canoes, especially when loons have chicks that they're defending, uh, the adults will, will give that tremolo laughter call. So that's a, it's good to remember that that's a warning call that really means humans have ventured too close. Uh, loons also give the tremolo call to eagles, just as they do with whales. Uh, they give them to large fish and snapping turtles and all sorts of different things. Um, all sorts of different animals can elicit the, the tremolo call. There's also a version of the tremolo call called the flight tremolo, which uh, birds give in flight while flying overhead. That has a very different function. Uh, again, we're not absolutely certain, we're just learning, but we know that intruders, young birds that are looking for territories, young adults that are looking for territories, often give the flight tremolo call. That call often gets the territorial male on a lake to yodel at them in response. So it seems to be a provocative call, the flight tremolo, and that may be one function of that call, is that if you're a young bird and you want to learn something about the male on the lake and how aggressively he's going to defend his territory, you might give a flight tremolo and hope that he'll yodel at him and that'll tell you both, uh, both who the male is because yodels are like human voices, they're distinct. Each male has a, has a unique yodel, uh, just as you and I have, have distinctive voices and the yodel will also tell how, how old the male is, how large the male is and how aggressive he's likely to be if you land in his territory. So that could be a function of the flight tremolo is to get the male to yodel, um, get him angry at you so he'll yodel and, and uh, you'll get information from that. Uh, there are also a lot of soft vocalizations that loons have and uh, th many of these are hard to hear well and hard to characterize and hard to learn about because they are so soft and hard to record but um, chicks and adults give many vocalizations. Adults call to chicks when they have food, for example. They have special calls that they give um, when, uh, when intruders are nearby. Um, they also have uh, calls that chicks give to adults when they're trying to beg for food. Uh, so those are a variety of soft calls that they give. Uh, loons also have courtship calls that they give, including one we, we call the soft wail, which is like the whale call. It's a mournful sounding call, but it's, it's relatively soft. It doesn't carry a long distance. Uh, another of the softer vocalizations that loons have is the toot vocalization. Uh, which is a high-pitched, it's almost like a loon barking, if, if you can imagine a loon barking. It's a vocalization that loons give as a warning that they've seen an intruder somewhere in the area. So that's the clear function of the toot vocalization. And there is a softer, less panicked version of the toot vocalization called the hoot. That's a common one to hear, although it's relatively soft. You have to be fairly close to the birds and have fairly tame loons to be able to hear it. But that's one you often hear given between pair members when they're in fairly close association. Uh, we're not sure exactly what the function of that call is. It may help them maintain contact with each other. Uh, it may help maintain the, the, the pair bond in some way. Um, but uh, we really are not clear on it, but it's an obvious uh, and easy to categorize vocalization, the hoot. One of the interesting soft calls that loons have is the ma call, which is almost like a humming. It almost sounds like a human humming.
The mock call we've learned a fair amount about because it occurs only in a narrow context. It only occurs during the time when loons are nest searching, when a male and a female are swimming slowly along shoreline areas looking for a nesting spot. The ma call is a call that usually the male gives more than the female. The male is the one who actually locates the nest site. He's the one who picks the nest location. Uh, we know from our studies of marked birds. But uh, the ma call is something, is a vocalization that, uh, that's soft and a little hard to hear except uh, if you're close to the birds or it's early morning. But it's uh, one of those vocalizations that we've learned a fair amount about because it occurs in such a narrow context. So we know it has something to do with nesting behavior and, and possibly uh, getting your mate to have the same physiological readiness for nesting as you do, as, as well as finding a final nesting location. You'd think that since we spent all this time listening to loons, hearing them at night and during the daytime, we would know a lot about their calls. And in some ways we do. We've been able to describe uh, many, many different calls. But as a scientist trying to learn what the function of that call is, why is that loon giving that call, uh, we're really at a very early stage. I think it's fair to say that most of the vocalizations that we hear from loons, and there are several different categories, we are just beginning to understand their function. Or maybe we understand one or two of their functions, but they probably have four or five different functions, uh, the others of which we just don't understand at all. The loons are tricky because they're an animal that's so well loved that everybody wants to know about them and wants to think that they understand what loons are saying but there's a difference between thinking we can understand what loons are saying and actually scientifically showing or proving uh, what those vocalizations mean. And, and we're in the process now as scientists of trying to understand in a more rigorous way what specifically each vocalization means. Thank you so much, Dr. Piper. Now I know the laughing call is called a tremolo, which is not coming from a happy loon. The National Loon Center's mission is to help all of us become champions for loons and freshwater everywhere. Miigwech bizindawig. Thanks for watching. Bye.